everyone, it's Kara and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a very highly requested video and a video that I can refer back to when I start doing tutorials or anything on my channel. Anyway, I don't want to make this intro too long, so honestly I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. The first item I want to talk about, or items in this case, is the paper I use. I use a couple different types of paper. Uh, different brands, but I usually use the same one for like 99% of my pieces if I'm honest and The main paper that I use is out of the Canson XL mixed media sketchbook This is my favorite paper and you will see me talking about the sketchbook a lot I'm sure you guys probably have already seen me talk about it if you've been through all my videos but this works for pretty much all the different materials that I use and it's just perfect for me I've done several different things in this already. I've used, this one's already taken out, I cut it up, so yeah. This is done with Copic markers, and then I have some watercolor type pencils. I, I will get into all the supplies later, but I just want to show you the different types of things I've already done in the sketchbook. And I've also used colored pencils, so you can see different types of materials work on this paper, and that's why it's one of my favorites. The next sketchbook that I found that I liked, and this is a pretty recent one, is the Strathmore Mixed Media. I just like mixed media paper. It works well, again, with a lot of different materials, which it should. It's mixed media. But this one is thick paper, and I haven't done anything in this one yet. This one's a lot thicker than the Canson, so there's a chance I might actually like this one more as I use it more. But I've only done one or two pieces with this paper, and this, this one's empty, so yeah. And the last sketchbook is the sketchbook signature, which I got out of one of my previous sketchboxes. I think this is the December one, but I don't really remember. Anyway, I'm going to do a little sketchbook tour on this one once I'm done with it. I almost am, but this is just a piece I did with Copic markers in it. So it works well with my markers, and I've also done a couple other little things, but this paper is really nice if you're on the go. And it's just an easy thing to put in your bag. And I like it. The thing about all these papers, though, is if you plan on using them with, like, Copic markers or just alcohol-based markers in general, something that bleeds through the pages, you will want to have a spare piece of paper or two behind the page you're working on. I usually keep one sheet aside that I use all the time for behind my pages. So that way I don't get any bleeding onto the next page. Anyways, that is all the paper, and next I'm going to go on to the carrying cases. Alright, the first carrying case I have is this plasticky one covered in cupcakes. And the reason why I like this one over other carrying cases or pencil bags is because it's this, like, plastic texture, which means if I get any ink on it, it'll just kind of wipe off easy. And... It also helps with just carrying a lot of ink pens. In the past, I've had fabric bags, and those often got soaked in ink because I forgot to put cap on tight enough, and it was just a mess, and it bled over my bag and everything. So this kind of protects my usual book bags and itself, in a sense. So you can get these pretty much around school time. I got mine at Walmart, I believe, and it was like two bucks. And I like it. So that's my standard pencil case. The next thing is an item that I got off of Wish. And just a disclaimer, if you ever shop from Wish, uh, I would just like to say you really should support the normal creators, whoever created the original products. However, I was in the process of making a Wish art supplies video and I'm just waiting for more items to show up. This one came months ago, and I've just been collecting things to make that video in the future. But I've fallen in love with this case. I don't know what the original creator was or the brand or anything, but I really do like this case. I think it's pretty sturdy, and it holds a lot of supplies. Like, this is just my inking pen area, and I will get into these later. I just wanted to show the case and talk about why I like it. Sturdy, holds a lot of products. It's pretty much the basics that you need to know from that. And the last thing is a brand that I like a lot and I talk a lot about on my channel. 
I can't really show the whole thing, but it's the Copic carrying case, and this holds 72 markers. And, ah, I just hit my desk. But, uh, I just like this because if I'm ever traveling somewhere, I just have my whole bag of Copics. I've taken this with me several places. So, that's all the carrying cases. For sketching, I pretty much always use the same sort of pencil. Um, I'm always using these Bic pencils, and you can usually get a really large case full of them. I don't remember the exact amount of pencils, but it's a lot. <laughs> and I usually get these around school time from Walmart, and they're my favorites because the erasers on them are incredible. Like, I have not found a quote-unquote cheap, if you want to call it that, mechanical pencil that works as well as these do. These are easy to also get your hands on, and I just love them. So those are my favorite to sketch with, and they also work well with my favorite colored lead. So I'm just preparing the lead over here, but my favorite colored lead is... <laughs> can I move here? Okay, yeah, you can. These are the color Eno LEDs, and they fit 0 0.7 lead pencils, and that's exactly what the Bic pencils were. And the reason why I like these so much is because, one, they're colored, and two, they are erasable. And these erase better than other erasable colored pencils I've used in the past. Are they perfect? No, you won't get rid of the lines completely, but they work so much better than any others I've ever used. So I really like this colored lead. And the last thing that I use to sketch with, like, pretty frequently, are actually Prismacolor colored pencils. And these don't really erase at all. But I just find that if I'm doing something quick or easy, just something, a small little artwork, these are really nice to sketch with. And I usually always use reds and pinks and oranges. I don't know why I always migrate towards those colors, but I do. The next thing I want to talk about are the erasers I like, and I have very few. I don't usually use anything outside of, well, my favorite mechanical pencil eraser, which is the Beck one, just because these work really well. But recently, I have found that I really like these kneaded erasers, and yeah, this is an eraser. These are pretty fancy. I remember them being in a lot of art classes. But the main reason why I like this is because you can just press it on the page and pick up a lot of pigment that you've put down if you want to be able to still kind of see the lines you're working with when you're inking. This is pretty great. And it's only pressing. That's what I use it for more than anything. And they work well. So <laughs> they work well and they're fun to play with. But this is like two bucks from Hobby Lobby or something like that. So really nice and affordable. And I love it. Now I'm going back to that pink case to talk about the fine liners I like. These ones technically aren't fine liners that I use, but the other ones kind of are. These are the main ones I use over here. They are the microns, and I usually always use them in the 01 millimeter sizing. Um, I have a Faber Castell one over here in 0 0.6, and I just really like this one because it's a smooth consistency and works well with my markers. Um, Prismacolor as well, they work well with my markers, and it's a nice fine point with even pigments. And then over here I have some Tombow ones, and I've used those in the past primarily for my Inktober, which I never finished, but I really enjoyed using these. They were little brush pens, and they were very easy to control. I'm not a brush pen user, but those were a lot fun to use. And the next one I have is from Ohuhu, and this is pretty new. Uh, I'm still trying to get used to using it, but I do really like the ink flow and the pigment on them. But it's a very fancy little pen that comes with cartridges you can put into the pen. I've already used one because it came empty and you had to Put it in yourself but the brush on this is still something that i'm trying to get used to but i find that it works well with my markers and stuff and that's always a key thing for me if it works well with my markers i'm gonna like it so this is a really good one 
This will probably be the longest portion of my video, but it's the markers I use. And I use a lot of different markers, believe it or not. I do not just use Copics. That's pretty surprising for a lot of people. But of course, the first one, Copic markers. Yeah, they're pricey, but they are definitely worth it for me. I usually get them for $5.24 off of Blick. And I mean, I always try to use coupons whenever I shop anywhere because I never want to pay a full eight dollars for these but they are my favorite they blend really well and the colors are beautiful and I don't really know what else there is to say about them I just use them a lot and I love them they are my babies the next marker are actually pretty new to me and I'm about to hopefully get the largest set available because I love them so much but they are the Blick Illustrator markers and this is the 24 set once I get the big set I actually plan to give this to my best friend and teach her how to use markers because she also draws and stuff and I love her so much. Also, her name is Kara, which is really funny. But yeah, um, I love these. They work very similar to Copics. Actually, pretty much the same in my opinion. I think they are a pretty good dupe, if you want to call it that. I don't think there's really a actual dupe for Copics. They, like, all markers are different, but these are my favorite dupe for Copics. And they are pretty cheap as well. You can get them off of Blick Art Supplies. So, yep, yep. The next are these touch markers, and these are not the touch five. These are actually the touch, like, markers. They're just called touch. But they come in a package like this, and again, they work very similar to Copics. The biggest thing that I've noticed with these that make them a little bit different is the brush nib on them are very soft and... Not as rough as the Copics are, in my opinion. And when I talk about the nibs on them, this is what a brush nib looks like. And these markers that I just showed also have the chisel nib, so those are what the nibs look like. The next marker, and these, you will, I, I'm going to be honest, you will not be able to find them anywhere. Um, they no longer make these, and I can't even find them anywhere online. They are these vintage markers, but I've fallen in love with them. They came from my aunt, and it was from her old workplace. But they are all chisel nibs, and they look like this. They have a very, very strong scent. However, they blend so beautifully. I was like, what? These are going on 20 years old or something like that, and it's insane how well they work. And they are very pigmented and beautiful. I just love them. I don't use them often because... They aren't made anymore, but when I do use them, oh, I just love them. I really wish I could find more of them, but I can't. Next, I have Sharpies, and you're probably like, what Sharpies? Why why Sharpies? I've fallen in love with these recently. Um, a couple of you have seen, actually not even just a couple, a lot of you have seen my sketchbook tour and then my Sharpie tutorial. And... I, I mean, I've talked about them a bit, but they do actually blend, and if you don't believe me, here are two pieces I've made, or like colored with Sharpies, so you can see that they actually do blend, and the fact that you can get them for so cheap and just find them anywhere and be able to blend like that, that's why I love them so much, and they're just a lot of fun if I want to do something a little bit more simple. So those are my favorite markers. That was actually a lot quicker than I thought. Oh wait, no, I forgot one. Uh, these are pretty new as well. I put some holographic tape on there, but these are the Ahuhu water-based markers. Out of all water-based markers, these are my favorite. I've already done a review on them as well, but these are brush nib and they are fine liner. And these fine liner pens work well with Copics and my markers, so they, 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 they are pretty nice. So if you're looking for a cheap water-based marker, that, that's what I would go for. For colored pencils, and I have a little example here of my colored pencil work. I might have shown it earlier on. I don't remember if I showed this portrait or not. I've been recording a while. <laughs> but my favorite colored pencils to use for portraits like this are Prismacolor colored pencils. And I'm going to be honest and say that I have not used a lot of colored pencils, so I am very, I just don't have a whole lot of experience with them, and I haven't used many outside of Personal Colors, Crayola, or Rose Art, which Rose Art is like, nah, <laughs> no, but 
These are my favorites so far that I've used. I really want to try the Faber Castell, Faber Castell. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I really want to use those ones because I've heard great things about them. But so far, out of the pencils I've used, these ones are my favorite. Prismacolors are great. And I don't have a case for them anymore because I threw it out since I had so many and I just put all my colored pencils into a large container so that I could access them a little bit easier and not have to lift up the different trays. I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Kara. Nice to meet you. Uh, the next pencils, and I'm going to put up a little example that I did with them. And these are new to me. These are the Derwent Inktense pencils, and you're probably looking at this going, how does it look like watercolor? Well, when I work with these, I use a barrel, water barrel brush like this. This is the Sketchbox one, I think. I don't know. I, I, the name came off. I'm pretty sure this is Sketchbox one, but I don't remember. But I use this, I fill it up with water, and after I put down a base layer of the pencil over here, you can... I can blend it out with the water and frankly this is a really easy way for me to get watercolor looks without using watercolor. I don't like watercolor. Okay I said it. I, I've said this in the past too. I just can't control the brush. So this is a really easy way for me to do watercolor looking art without actually using watercolor. So I am in love with these and these are a lot of fun to use. I've done several different artworks with them already and this is just my favorite out of the bunch. Yeah. <laughs> the final thing I want to talk about are the detailing pens that I use in my artwork. And this is probably my most commonly asked question is what do I use to create the stars and little details on my work? Well, I have two different supplies. One of them is newer than the other and I'm going to get to the larger one later. So the first one I'm going to show you is uh, this Uniball Signo pen. And it's just a basic looking pen, but it works really well. And I usually like to draw on my hand first before I actually apply it to an artwork, which is how I make it so opaque. So the Uniball Signo, this is the broad tip. I really want to get a fine one because this one's really nice for larger stars, but I really like having finer points. So I just like this one because it's super opaque. I would say it's more opaque than the Jelly Rolls. I just don't like it as much because of how broad it is, but if it was a fine one, I would absolutely adore it. And now, I, I've just already mentioned the other one I like to use, but they are the Jelly Rolls, and this is my huge case full of just a bunch of different types. So Jelly Rolls come in multiple different styles, and I would say that my favorite ones, oh, <laughs> my favorite ones, I believe, are the Moonlight Jewel ones. Those are sort of like the neon ones, and those are just super opaque and go over almost everything, but they also have like metallic, which goes over everything. Metallic gold, metallic silver, like this metallic gold with a certain undertone, pinks, greens, blues, huge variety of things. The other one that I really like is the glaze one, because the glaze pens, they leave... Like you can still see the art underneath it. You can still see all the lines and everything. It's just like a nice glaze and shiny texture over top of the artwork. So these are probably the things I use more than anything. The white ones are super opaque and you can get them at, like them at almost any craft store. I get them from Joanne Fabrics, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, DickBlick.com or Blick Art Supplies. <laughs> Amazon, eBay, you can find them everywhere. And they are just amazing and pretty affordable. So, yeah. Anyways, that is it for this video. I'm going to try my best to leave links to as many of these different supplies as I can in the description down below. If it's not down there, chances are I cannot find it. But I will try my best. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't really know what else there is to add to that. But if you like this video, feel free to leave a like on it. If you are not already, subscribe to my channel, support my art, and all that. And my social media links will be in the description down below as well. My Patreon, my Redbubble shop, just everything you need to know, pretty much. I will see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be a Galaxy tutorial video because you guys have been asking for that a lot. So I'm going to try that, and I'm going to use different materials 
So if you don't have Copex, then you have a few other options. But yeah, see you in the next video. Bye!